Um, hey, my legion. How y'all doing today? I'm here today to review two forgotten films from the 1980s. And I have a personal history with both movies, kind of. And I'll tell you about that. Um, and it was they were both told to me that Christopher Sposa told me they were both on YouTube. I mean, because there's so much so much stuff out there. I, I don't even know what's all on YouTube. Sometimes you can look up stuff and be pleasantly surprised. Sometimes you look up stuff that might be, you think might be on YouTube, and it's not. And both these movies are on YouTube, uh, The Unseen and Stooge Mania. I, I, I want to talk about The Unseen first, because that's the one I have the most knowledge about. And he told me Unseen was on there. I mean, he told me, I think, when I was on vacation, but I, or even before that. And I've seen it before, so I kind of put that in the, on the back burner. But with The Unseen... I remember we, uh, well, both The Unseen and uh, Suge Media were generally hated, especially hated by critics. I know that they both got a, I, I got this video review book while I was in the Army, I mean, and um, in Fort, Fort Georgia at, at Walden's Books, I think, or, and um, they gave both uh, Suge Mania and um, The Hidden a Turkey. Yeah, I mean, I, Turkey's the worst, I mean, a lot of little turkey stuff, that's the worst review for a movie. That's worse than no, uh, one half a star. It's a turkey. Um, and, uh, now I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, and then they said that, that uh, for the unseen, it said, this horrible movie, uh, uh, demay, uh, should never, I mean, this horrible movie, uh, Wait a second, this, this horror, no, it says, the review for that, I think it was, this horror movie deserves to be unseen. That's what they said, which I thought was a little funny. And I, um, I had, we had, uh, we never had cable growing up in the 80s. We lived out in the country, at least that's what my dad said. They had cable in a two towns boarding us. Um, and we just had rabbit ears. And there was a TV that my parents had in their room that had rabbit ears. And usually we could get like, uh, Canadian stations, especially CBC, which was Channel 10, on uh, VH, on uh, the other one, Channel 10. And then on the upstairs TV, we could get City TV. We couldn't get City TV downstairs. We got Channel 10, and uh, there was another one, Channel 13 or Channel, I can't remember. And um, City TV, usually Friday nights, they would have, Friday and Saturday nights, they'd have like uh, all night movies, and usually it was like. Um, they were uncut usually, or sometimes they show old, older movies that were usually just uncut anyways. And um, and that was kind of like our cable city TV. And they usually show, I mean, I saw some uncut movies on CBC before. I remember they had uh, Blood Beach on there. I saw that uncut. And um, so, you know, they had the uh, all-night movies. It was on Friday. I think it was like at 4.34 and 4.30 when they had the unseen. I never heard of it. And this came out in 1980. I think it was like, there was a whole lot, when Halloween came out, it was a little bunch of independent slasher film. And then after that, there was a whole lot of horror films come out. Some slasher, some not. This was kind of like a slasher, kind of not. The Unseen. And it stars Barbara Bach and uh, Sidney Lassett. I don't know if that's Lassick. I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name. And, C and Stephen First. Now, I don't know how Stephen first felt about this film, and I, I looked it up. I couldn't find any information about it. I don't know if he was happy about this film or not, but he's in the movie, and this was like two years after he made it big on Animal House. And um, I don't want to give away too much more about Stephen first in this movie. And basically, Barbara Bach, and she has like two female assistants, and uh, they're supposed to go to this festival in this one town. And they're supposed to have reservations in this hotel, and the hotel screwed up. They screwed up the reservations, and they, they apologized. They said that everything's book solved for this festival. And she was looking, uh, she was looking around. They couldn't find anywhere to go. And they were driving down. They found this big ho uh, hotel. And he was knocking the door. And then um, Sidney Lissette uh, walked in and said, Hi, miss. How you doing? And he said, uh, We'd like a room. And he said, oh, I'm sorry, miss. This is uh, now a museum. It's no longer a hotel. Uh, and then he tried to get her... You know, he keeps track of the hotel, and then they, you know, they he has a big house down, down the street, and this way down in the town. And uh, he said, "Well, I can help you see if I can look for a hotel for you." So I, 
and called me and said, having the books on, I'm sorry, ma'am, I have nothing else I can do. And she said, well, you've been very nice, and I'll, you know, and take care. And then he walked, and he goes, miss, 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 maybe I have a plan. Maybe you can stay at the house, our house for a couple of days. I mean, they're like two or three days, maybe like stay overnight. It's like a big uh, news story, and then they stay overnight. And uh, they said, well, okay, that's very sweet. And they said, well, just get in the car, and then, I mean, it's better than sleeping in your car, and then I'll... You know, I'll get in my car and I'll show you where it's at. And then he, and he said, I have to call my wife, Virginia, to get, you know, just to tell her that we're having company. And he was all excited. And then he said, Virginia, we're having company. And be good or I'll be very cross with you. So he turned out to be a bad guy. And they stay in and there's like a secret. I don't want to give away too much more. Now they had, um, now in the house, they had like these steel, uh, for vents, they had like these steel grates. They're usually steel grates, but it's like, it's great with a fancy design. It remind me of my great grandmother's house. She passed away in '93, and we used to go to Punxsutawney in the '70s and the '80s. And I remember, you know, we would stay overnight. We stayed overnight there a few times, and they, um, I remember they had like the little still great, and you can look down and you can see in the kitchen, and then in the morning you can smell coffee through there. So that reminded me of grandpa. I mean, it wasn't as big as the vents in this house, in uh, the unseen. And it's a, uh, and I remember seeing it, like a critic said, I loved it. And uh, when I first saw it back in the 80s, I loved it. And then in Fort Bragg, I found it again. It's hard to find because it's an independent film. It's not, it's like a forgotten film. I found it on, uh, he said it was released through Prism. I don't remember, I remember it released through V, VCI or something like that. I don't remember being released on Prism at all. I remember getting and making a copy of it. I've watched a few other times, but I haven't seen it in a long, long time. And it was cool that he showed me that. But, I mean, I said, I've seen that before, so it might be a while before I see it again. And I finally decided to see it Sunday. I'm going to put this video up Wednesday. If I don't screw up the schedule like I did with that uh, skillet meal, I was, I was supposed to send the skillet meal up Tuesday, and I end up posting it Sunday. So I had to rearrange some things, because that was my main video. But I'm going to try to schedule this for Wednesday at 6 o'clock. And um, my only criticisms were two items about a subplot and also something I thought was really cliche, but it ended up helping the movie greatly and um, helping the suspense. I really liked the movie a lot. And there's some silly scene. I mean, if you have a dark sense of humor to some comedic scene, Sydney set was uh, feeding the chicken goes, dee 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 I thought that was hilarious. Or a part where he was mean to his wife. And then she was like all serious and goes, boo. And he started laughing. You should have seen your face. She was upset. That was hilarious. But I mean, you have to have a dark sense of humor to appreciate that. But I loved The Unseen. And the critics hated it, but I loved it. I give that full on 10 out of 10. I loved it. It's on, it's on Netflix. It's made 1980. I think you'll really enjoy it. It's not exactly. It's They had some serious. Uh, it can be intense at times, but it's really good. And, uh. I give it 10 out of 10. Now, the next movie is Stooge Mania. Now, my history with this, when he told me about Stooge Mania about a week or two ago, and then he put that clip again, and uh, I've, I've, my history with this was, before, when I graduated high school, there was like a five, wait a second, I graduated high school, right around June, there was like, there was like a six month space, six and a half month space before I went in the army. And in uh, August, I think it was, uh, my aunt and uncle wanted me to, me and my sister to visit them. So we flew, we actually took a plane. First time I ever taken a plane, we got, you know, we went, flew. And that's how I found out how to help me out, you know, as far as flying in the Army. So that was a good experience right there to know the airport. I'd never flown before. And uh, we went down there. I remember we went to a video rental place a couple times. And I ran the Ferris Bueller's Day Off and... Uh, for some odd reason, I ran, ran it past India. And I was the only one watching that damn thing. I, I saw the whole thing, but it was like... I don't know, I was in a serious movie, some serious movies back then. And I ran Splatter of the Architects of Fear, which is a hard-to-find horror film, which is really good. And then I saw Stooge Mania in, the, in uh, the village. I looked at it, I looked at it, and I was like... The way that uh, Paramount... Uh, had, it didn't look that good. So I, I, I wanted to see it, but I was like... Eh, I kept... 
I was on the fence. I said, well, I'll put it back. I don't know if it'd be that good. And then I kind of forgot about it. And I guess that uh, it was out of print for a long time on VHS. It came out in 86. Had a brief theatrical run. And it was made by Atlantic. And it was pretty much hated uh, by a lot of people. And then eventually it came out on DVD, I think. It wasn't released on DVD for like 20 years or so. And I couldn't find it anywhere else. And I actually just forgot about the dang thing. And I finally saw it. And what it's based about is Josh Mostel, uh, son of Zero uh, Mostel, who I know, I've seen him in a lot of movies. And, um, you know, he's obsessed with the Three Stooges. And they show, like, a clip from the 50s saying, like, you know, when they went, kid parents would drop us out of the theaters. A lot of the kids would goof off watching movies, but I would seriously watch the movies. And they would watch the Three Stooges shorts. And a lot of the Three Stooges stuff in this movie is stuff that's in the public domain, not the real licensed stuff. Um... And like about, it's very cheaply made, kind of like about half the movie is like Three Stooges footage. But I mean, I love the Three Stooges, so that wasn't a problem for me. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to go to the theater and watch this movie. I'd want, If I went to the theater, I'd watch the original Three Stooges shorts in this movie. But it revolves around Zero, and he's going to be marrying Melanie Chardoff. He's very lucky. I think she's lovely. I always have. She was on Friday, and then she was on... Ah, uh, Parker Lewis can't lose. I don't know what she looks like now. I haven't seen her in a long time. And then, uh, but he's supposed to keep his uh, obsession for the Stooges. He's a Stooge maniac. And they have a song of Stooge maniac kind of lame. And I guess that this movie was uh, to cash in on the popularity of the Three Stooges, especially when that uh, song Curly Shuffle was released like two years before. And basically, you know, he, uh, he screws up his marriage, and then he ends up on Stooge Row like a probably get skid rush so so silly and you know he and there's like a saying a song called stooge hills to try to get deprogrammed people who are stooge maniacs and it's run by sid c well uh, the one guy it's in it's run by this one guy but sid caesar's one of the dies sid caesar's very funny in it and a lot of the footage is it's silly the live action footage not the three stooges stuff but the other stuff is very silly the three stooges stuff's always funny and it's tough to top the, what the three stooges do you know, I mean, you know, I think that uh, the Fairley Brothers, the Nerf Three Stooges movie, did it pretty good. And this movie, uh, a lot of the stuff is funny just because it's so silly. Uh, but there's a couple of, like, uh, music montages that, I mean, go along too long. I think it wears out as welcome, but, I mean, I did laugh. I did enjoy the movie. I couldn't imagine it watching it more than one time, but I did like it. I think my dad would have thought it was funny, but he probably would have said it was um, I give it a 7 out of 10. I don't know if I'd ever watch it again, but I'm glad I finally got to see it for the very first time. A uh, 7 out of 10, if you like silly humor. I mean, I'm not, I mean, the Three Stooges stuff is classic slapstick. I'm not, I'm talking about the movie and the live action stuff me mixed in with this stuff. The Three Stooges stuff is top notch, but the movie itself, I'm out of 7 out of 10. If you like silly humor, you might like it. And Victoria Jackson plays a nurse in this movie, too. And that's before she uh, got a little more famous uh, for being on Saturday Night Live. I don't know when she joined the cast of Saturday Night Live. Uh, this was like a year or so before that, and she was in movies like Casual Sex and stuff like that. But that's my review of both uh, The Hidden and uh, Stooge Mania. And I hope, you, I hope you like these two reviews. These are hidden, uh, hidden movies from the 80s, and they're both available on YouTube. So you can look them up, um, and I hope you like them. So until next, thank you, Christopher Spose, for letting me know about these two. So until next time, bye, please. Take care, my leech.